Welcome to the category mistake. I am here again. Uh, welcome back. Over the last couple of weeks, I've been talking a lot about forgiveness, feelings, uh, traumatic things, perseverance, strength. Um, this week, I want to talk about what's happening next week at this time. Next week at this time, we are going to pick and elect leaders of our country. And while that sounds like a great idea, it's really not going to be picked next Tuesday. Uh, the way that our system works is we have an electoral college, which we've talked about before. These states, every state has so many electorates, and you need so many to get elected. Well, there's always a few states, there's like six to eight of them every election, that are really close, and until all the votes are counted, and then recounted, and then counted for a third time, do we really know, unless there's a landslide somewhere else. This election, like most in the last 20 years, is not going to be a landslide. Obama had a little bit of a landslide. Um, Reagan had landslides. The first time the first Bush ran, landslide. But other than that, it's usually pretty close. And it's close because America as a whole is a very 50-50 country. We're not super right or super left. We're kind of in the middle. Now, the problem is the candidates we have are always <laughs> super left or super right. So there's a base of both that kind of fight against each other, and it always makes us think that we hate one another. And that's a weird thing to do. Um, I've talked about that also in my podcast recently, is about how can we not, you know, once we elect these people, it doesn't matter, you know, no one, no one goes in the ballot box with you and looks at what you voted for. I've been seeing online a bunch of people saying, oh, put this in the ballot box when you're done. Uh, tell them that if you care about this, vote for this person. If you care about this, vote for this person. The last thing we want to do in this world is tell people that if they care about something, they have to think the same way you do. Um, I could tell everybody, you know, if you care about children, vote for this person. What if they don't have children? What if they don't like kids? What if they don't care about it? All of a sudden, an 18-year-old, if he votes the wrong way, doesn't care about kids. That's stupid. Come on now. Okay. So political discourse, which is what I think last week's was called, um, if I remember correctly. What's funny is I posted something on TikTok right after, and I got flagged for political messaging. And that's really what today is about. Today is about... When did we become a society where talking about the election actually can get you in more trouble than just, I don't know, anything else? I was able to normally talk about you know other things in this world, and no one cared. Um, in the last four years, if you talk about COVID or politics, you get... Online, they hit you up. They have like political, political, or, you know, to learn really about COVID-19, click here. Um, we are so afraid of, quote unquote, misinformation. We don't listen to any information without believing that it's fake. So in the last week or so, you had President Trump go on with Joe Rogan, big podcaster, bigger than anybody, you know, he's like the Mr. Beast of podcasts. Okay, he's big. Um, and he, Joe Rogan for three hours just let him talk. Talk about everything. From 2020 election to how everyone loved him until they didn't. To how Hillary Clinton said he wasn't a real president in 2016 and fought the election. Uh, but he shouldn't do it because he's a Republican. For 2020, he let him just talk about everything. And online, you've got people going, oh, my God, he hates speech, da, da, da. and then other people going, go, Joe, go. But then today it was released that Joe Rogan wanted to interview Kamala, the vice president, and her stipulation was, you have to come to me, and it's only going to be about an hour. 
Joe Rogan does his podcast in his area, in his spot that he has all set up. And it's usually about three hours. He's like, now, this is how I do it. Trump came to me. You can come to me. Kamala's like, you know, I'm really busy. I'm the vice president. I'm going to realize it. I don't think Joe's going to go to her. It's a week before the election. Probably not going to happen. That's fine. But then I started thinking to myself, I don't watch regular TV right now. Not because I don't like what's on, but because of political ads. I don't like looking on social media because every other social media post is political. And I don't like thinking that this podcast, any podcast out there, will get flagged because I talk about politics. I am more right-leaning than left. Now, I'm in a job, and I've been in a job for a long time, where most of the people I work with are left-leaning. Great. Doesn't mean I have to be. I also am around a lot of right-leaning people, and that's where I realized a long time ago that most of our country is in the middle. A lot of us don't like paying taxes. A lot of us think the country needs to focus on taking care of ourselves first. A lot of us care about the health and welfare of people, homeless, non-homeless, and everybody in between. A lot of us care about the world and the environment. The problem is half of those are right-wing ideals and the other half are left-wing. So most of us, again, are in the middle. But we can't say that. We have to say, oh, I stand with Trump. Okay, well, you're a Nazi. I stand with Kamala. Well, then you're a communist. Why can't we just talk about it in a discussion? I see online all the time people debating each other. And it gets ugly 97% of the time. It just gets so angry. Uh, I grew up in the 70s, 80s, and 90s before I became a real adult. You know, you had Reagan debating Carter, and it was civil. I think civil. Reagan against Mondale, civil. Bush versus Dukakis, pretty civil. Bush versus Clinton, not bad at all. But what slowly started happening with the invention of social media, 24-hour news cycles, and more money than God pouring into the politics of the world, we stopped being civil and we started being attention grabbing. Trump gets people riled up because he is willing to say things that we all think out loud. Clinton, very similar. Clinton was slick. He was called, you know, a lot of people call him Slick Willie because he could just talk himself his way out of anything. Obama, great talker. Obama was the first one to really use that social media. Clinton used late night television, like Arsenio Hall and others, where he just kind of, you know, he was a guy down the street who liked to eat McDonald's. And, you know, sometimes he played with women that he shouldn't have played with. The only difference between Clinton and Donald Trump's personalities is Trump has more money. You know, they both like to talk themselves in and out of situations. They both like women more than they should. And they both have said dumb things. Differences, one's a Democrat, one's a Republican. But you can't you can't talk about it anywhere publicly without causing an uproar. I can't talk to people at my work about it. I can't when I was a teacher, I could never bring it up. I wasn't supposed to bring it up. Why? Well, you know, what if one of their parents voted a different way and now you have offended them? You can't post on your social media if you're a teacher or if you work in certain jobs because, well, then your social media can be uh, looked at for your job and they can discipline you. It used to be, good, bad, or ugly, it used to be that you could say whatever you wanted. No one cared. Not only did no one care, you could have water cooler, quote unquote, talk in your work environment. 
and no one cared. You just talk, hey, did you see this? Hey, what about this? Hey, I like this person. And then MySpace came and Facebook and Instagram and Twitter and TikTok and all these places where all of a sudden you put your stuff out there and someone else has hurt feelings and they post it against it. And then they post against that and then you go back and forth. And then since 2020, we've had a lot of sensors, you know, well, you know, they said COVID doesn't kill you or COVID uh, came from a lab. So we're going to flag it for inappropriate or uh, January 6th wasn't as bad as it seemed. And it was mostly like a handful of people doing really dumb things. No, we got to flag that because there's 112 people, not 97 people. So it's more than a, you know, a few, uh, it was a tyranny or, um, you know, Joe Biden gave Iran $60 gajillion. Well, he didn't, but there's a lot of lies out there. And it used to be we were trusted to find out the truth on our own. We didn't have to worry about a third party saying, hey, you can't say that, or hey, that's wrong. We would watch the news at night on any channel, and we'd go, okay, they're reporting the news. And there's no angle to it. Now, of course, there's an angle to everything. Uh, Even Joe Rogan, he's like, well, these stations used to love you until you ran for president. Um, These people used to love you. The View, he talked about The View and how when Donald Trump came out joking about being the president, Whoopi Goldberg said it's great, gave him a hug. Barbara Walters loved him. And then he started winning in the polls. And lo and behold, they hated him. They don't hate him because he's Donald Trump. They hate him because he's a Republican. And if he ran as a Democrat, they'd probably love him more. And that's changed. When I grew up and I was watching the news, I always thought to myself, okay, these guys are telling me straight facts. I don't have to worry about angle. I don't have to worry about anything. I don't have to worry about it being wrong. Then CNN came along and MSNBC and Fox News and all these other places where the news is 24-7 and the job is to get the breaking news for anybody else so you can get the ratings so you can make money. NBC, ABC, and CBS are given taxpayer dollars for their news program. They're given money because they report the news on public airways. Cable companies' news are not. But NBC has MSNBC. ABC has who knows what. And then CBS, they have, all of them have their own you know, cable news channels. Uh, CNN, I think, is CBS. But anyway, now... They're not worried about the public funds coming in. They're worried about the commercial money coming in. They don't have to get public funds, but they do. Um, and that's the difference. Back when they had to report the news because they were the only thing on, they didn't worry about breaking it early because they were worried about getting it wrong. Now they don't care about getting it wrong. They just want to be first. And that can be a problem. It doesn't matter if you're first, if you're wrong. You know, it just doesn't matter. Now, there's sometimes you can be first, second, third, last, and still get it wrong. And I don't blame those situations. On 9-11, there was so much news just popping everywhere. And a lot of it turned out to be wrong. Now, it turned out to be wrong not because the news reporters hated, you know, was trying to lie. It was the government didn't know what was going on. So they reported the news agencies, everything they knew, and the government didn't know. But nowadays, you know, you have, you'll have a reporter hear something from a friend who heard it online from a TikTok shop who heard it from, you know, somebody down the street. And it's news. That's not how it's supposed to be. 
you know, we worry about misinformation instead of just information. I believe, and I could be wrong, I believe most people in this country, most people in this world can hear the news, hear information. And if they don't, if the news people say, our understanding is this, most of us have the technology and the ability to go online and find more information. Or they can say, hey, this is reported to us. We're not sure if it's true, but we're reporting what we heard. Great. Instead, they talk that it's, you know, factual truth. You know, uh, Trump said in the debate the crime rate went up. CBS fact-checked him, told him it wasn't. And two days later, the FBI is like, well, he's right. But by then, the cat's out of the bag. They've already corrected him, told him he was wrong. And it doesn't matter if he's right two days later because no one sees it. They didn't let the American people do their own fact-checking. They did it. And the problem is Kamala Harris, the same debate, said there was no active troops in war zones when we have active troops in many war zones. They didn't fact check. Why? Who knows? And I can tell you what I think. But um, and that's troubling to a lot of people because, again, when I post this podcast, when I post anything about this podcast, I'm going to be labeled a political statement or to learn more about the political uh, elections of 2024 and how you can take what you just heard and vote honestly. I'm, I'm flagged for it. If, if I'm some little nobody gets flagged for it, why aren't the people who are running this country flagged for it? Why? That's a great question. I was also learning that a lot of the companies who pay for the flagging, who pay for certain websites, who pay for certain things to happen, are very much one-sided in the political world. And that's kind of funny to me because I would think a lot of them would like Trump because of the tax situation. But what I've also realized is Trump wants to do certain things with these companies who are throwing jobs overseas to a different area. He wants them to start being in America, and he's going to tax the living crap out of them, and now they're upset. But then I started looking at these companies more and more, and I thought to myself, these companies are kind of shady. I wonder, wonder how they make their money. So I started looking into them, and they own everything. Everything from food companies to telecommunication companies to automob- parts of automobile companies. So what I did over the last couple weeks is I have a stock portfolio, and I invested in those companies just for giggles. And when the Trump was doing poorly in the polls, their shares went up. When Trump pulled ahead in the polls, their shares went down. And it's, it's funny to watch that I can lose and make money depending on Trump's you know, poll numbers. I also then decided to take two Congress people's stock portfolio and take one out of their stock portfolio and just follow them exactly. And those two stocks are up a combined, you know, 103% in the last month. Now, I didn't invest a lot. We're talking like dollars, not hundreds of dollars, dollar dollars. And they're both running for office. And they're not, you know, they're allowed to invest in stocks. But if you watch them on the campaign trail, They're funded by these companies that they're putting money into. And these companies are companies that they have um, helped with regulations. When Trump says he wants to deregulate things to make it easier for companies to grow, he's talking companies who invest in America, companies who live in America, work in America, produce in America. The companies that 
these two Congress people invest in that they've deregulated. Both of them are huge companies that most of their inventory come from Taiwan and China. So, again, kind of weird that, you know, the people they support are con- uh, companies that are not invested in America. Not a big fan of that. And this will be my last big political podcast for a while, unless the country goes to hell next week. Um, but the reason I'm doing this is to show that little old me who knows nothing, who doesn't understand things, I still can see blatant misuse of power every day. And if I can see it, if I understand it, why is it that the news media, uh, social media, the people who tell us what's going on, why is it they're not reporting on it or explaining it to us? Why is it that companies who should not be in the political game are the largest commercial contributors to these webs to these uh, news sites companies like BlackRock and Vanguard and Amazon and Walmart and you know they they own so many companies that when they advertise quote unquote you know they advertise on stations and they invest in stations that go with what they politically believe. Berkshire Hathaway, Vanguard, again. These guys just invest in companies that make the money. And that makes sense, right? Why are they investing in news channels? Why is they're investing in CNN? MSNBC, ABC, CBS, NBC. Then you have other companies who invest in Fox, in Bloomberg. You have companies who, you know, and no one calls them out for it. No one calls them out for it because I think they're so big, they're afraid what's going to happen. I don't care. No one's coming after me. I'm not important enough to come after. And it's great. Why is it great? Because I don't have to worry about, you know, someone saying, oh, my God, you're a horrible person. Oh, my God, you're da 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 Whatever. Doesn't matter. No one's coming after me. No one's coming after me because guess what? No one cares about me. No one cares what I do, how I do, or where I do. I'm just a little old Joe Schmo in the middle of nowhere. Okay? And that's great. So here's my note, notes, news and notes for this week, hopefully for the last time for a while. While watching things over the next week, on Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, the news, YouTube, any places like that, Spotify, whatever you do, don't just read it, watch it, and think, these guys are thinking about me. Watch the commercials, watch what they're promoting, and then look at the companies deeper. If these guys are just being funded by one side, if these guys are just being funded by the extreme left or the extreme right, think to yourself, as a news agency, you want to make money. Are you going to make the people who pay you money happy by telling their side of the news or are you trying to tell say the news in a way where it supports every side and unfortunately right now i don't think there is a channel that does that i don't think there's a news agency that does it joe rogan did try i'm going to give him credit he did talk to trump for three hours and while he did not 
say anything super positive about Kamala Harris. He didn't say anything super negative. He tried to keep saying, I want her on the show. I want her on the show. I have put the invitation out there. I agree with him. He should not change his show format. If he didn't change it for Trump, why would he change it for Kamala, right? That's just silly. Why would he change one? And, you know, why wouldn't he? It, then people are going to be like, oh, he caved to Kamala, but wouldn't do anything for Trump. He hates Trump. And it would be a negative either way. So I think it's fine. But think about when you're watching Instagram or if you're watching YouTube or if you're watching the news or if you're watching TikTok. And there's always ads, right? There's ads for everything. Look into who those ads are owned by. You'd be surprised who owns GE, which is the parent company of NBC. You'd be surprised who own, you know, who's invested into Disney, who's the parent company of ABC, ESPN, Hulu, or CBS, who's a Time, Warner, HBO, Max. These are big companies. They're not what they used to be. They're owned by huge multinational corporations whose job it is is to make money. It's not to tell the news, not to tell the truth, it's to make money. So until next week, where hopefully, I'm not going to do it till Wednesday. Why? Because the election is on Tuesday, and I'm hoping by Wednesday we have a plan for this world. I'm going to start going into a kinder, happier, joyful time. Till next time, think before you vote. Learn before you vote. Pray before you vote. But vote. Do your duty. And at the end of this, remember your family is still your family. You don't have to disavow them. Um, The people you know are still your, the people you know, they're not evil. They're not ugly. They're not stupid. They're people. And in the end, The only way for you to make your life better is for you to make your life better. Donald Trump, Kamala Harris, Nancy Pelosi, Mitch McConnell, they're doing nothing to help you. No matter what they say, they're not there to help you. They're there to make money and to look powerful. You're the most powerful person in your life. So learn about it, change your world, but vote, do your duty. Have a good week, everybody.